inquire about problems with urinary retention, inability to start or stop the stream. Also ask about any history of kidney infection or disease. It is important to know if there is any history of genitourinary problems. Although more common in women, stress incontinence can occur with aging, so it is important to ask about expelling urine as a result of coughing, sneezing, or lifting heavy objects. Has he ever been diagnosed with kidney stones or urinary tract infections? Also ask about flank pain, both now and in the past, Flank pain is one of the hallmark signs of kidney infection, particularly when accompanied by fever. It can also indicate the presence of kidney stones. Has he noticed any lumps or swelling on the testes or within the scrotum? Ask if he performs self-exam of the testicular region, and if yes, how often? Ask about a history of undescended testicles, even as an infant. Also ask about a history of hernia, or if he has noticed any bulging in the inguinal area, or a sense of fullness or heaviness in the scrotum. All right, and are you sexually active? Yeah. Sexually active, okay, and how many sexual partners have you had in the last six months? Taking a sexual history can be uncomfortable. It may be difficult for male patients to discuss this with female care providers. Male patients should be offered the opportunity to talk with a male provider if they seem to have a reluctance to talk with a female nurse. However, sexual health is an important concern, so learn to ask questions with the same matter-of-fact approach you use for asking about other aspects of physical health and function. Ask if he is sexually active, and if so, how many sexual partners has he had in the past six months? Does he use condoms for contraception and prevention of STDs or sexually transmitted diseases? Does he have any history of STIs? And has he had sexual relations with someone he knew to have an STI? Ask about discharge from the penis, commonly associated with gonorrhea, or the presence of a rash or lesions on the skin of the penis or scrotum. Provide your patient with an exam gown and privacy to undress for the objective portion of the assessment. Okay, so now the next part of our examination, we will be doing a breast exam, basically checking for lumps and breast cancer. Okay. Although the breasts are not part of the genitourinary system, they are included in this program. Breast tissue is actually similar to lymphatic tissue, and in the male, the breasts serve no specific function, but typically they are assessed as part of sexual health for both men and women. Although breast cancer is much more common in women, it does occur in men, and symptoms are virtually the same. Begin by visually assessing for any lumps, redness, or exudate on the nipples. Ask if he has noticed any lumps in the breast area or discharge from the nipple. Assess for lumps by palpating with the fingertips of both hands, beginning at the top inner margin of the breast and moving across to the outer edge, then down and inward, repeating this pattern until the entire right, breast has been assessed. Perform the exam in the same manner on the other breast. Explain to your patient that men should also be observant for any lumps in the breasts and need to see their physicians should these occur. So basically at home, what you can do, you can do the same thing, lift your arm up and just long, deep stroke motion down, and basically you're feeling for any lumps. Mm -hmm. You can use at least like four fingers, that way you can cover more surface area. Mm -hmm. 